Pitt and Franco stepped forward. Then they noticed a blue object wedged in the hatch cover's hydraulics, next to a supporting brace. Inching closer, they could see it was the body of a man dressed in blue coveralls. The odor of decomposing flesh was overpowering, but the sight before them was even worse. The clothes were unmarked and perfectly clean. Judging by the heavy work boots and a pair of gloves cinched to his waist, Pitt guessed he was an ordinary seaman, but that was the only thing he could determine. The exposed skin had bloated to grotesque proportions and turned to the color of French mustard. Small rivulets of dried blood had pooled around his ears and mouth. A swarm of flies buzzed around the seaman's face and clustered on his open, bulging eyes. Yet it was the body's extremities, marked beyond mere decomposition, that was most grisly. The seaman's ears, nose, and fingertips were charred black, though the skin remained unbroken. Pitt recalled photos of polar explorers who had suffered extreme frostbite, marked by black blisters covering patches of dead skin. Yet the Tasmanian star had sailed nowhere near any polar region. Franco slowly backed away from the figure. Santa Maria, he gasped. He's been taken by the devil himself. Hey guys, I just finished reading Poseidon's Arrow by Clive Cussler and Dirk Cussler. This is actually my second time reading this title, and I think I had a much better time with it. The plot of the story is the United States Navy is secretly building a high-tech super submarine called the Sea Arrow, and its construction is dependent on rare earth metals. Things turn for the worst when the engineer responsible for the Sea Arrow's design is murdered, and the secret plans are lost. Dirk Pitt is on the case to recovering the secret plans and finding out who is hijacking freighters transporting rare earth minerals around the world. The fate of the U.S. naval defense depends on it. Some of the positives in this novel is the book's pacing. I felt like it was a thrill ride consistently and I was invested in the story and characters. I liked how this story concentrated more on Pitt's actions this time around instead of him being a secondary character like in the previous titles. The freighter battle in the Panama Canal was exciting and exhilarating, and I liked how Dirk Pitt was able to outwit the bad guy's ADS system by wearing a heat-resistant fire proximity suit. I liked the character of Zhao, the Chinese military intelligence officer. He was sort of the anti-hero that would try to kill Pitt if it served the interest of his country, but ended up saving his life in order to complete his mission. I was glad that the Cussler guys didn't make the Chinese the main villains of this book, because to be honest, that is a cliche in most of the spy novels. The Chinese military just wants to get their hands on the Sea Arrows plans in order to compete with the U.S. Navy. Pablo has to be my favorite villain's henchman besides Conger Rand in Valhalla Rising. Pablo is a cold-hearted mercenary who isn't afraid to get his hands dirty and is able to actually be a challenge for our heroes. From stealing the Sea Arrow plan's motor to destroying the rival mining depot and kidnapping Anne multiple times. One negative with Poseidon's Arrow was that the tacked-on story of the World War II Italian submarine, the Barbarigo. The Barbarigo was transporting samarium ore for the Germans in order to create a magnetic superweapon. The plot point goes absolutely nowhere? Well, that's a shame. It would have been better if the cargo on the lost ship would have helped our modern needs like the ruthenium in Arctic Drift. I think my biggest issue was that I never got to see the Sea Arrow in action. I think the submarine should have been in the finale or at least in one chapter doing an actual sea trial. All we get is Dirk Pitt and Anne discussing how the Sea Arrow is actually being launched during another ship's christening. Overall, I would give this book a rating of 3.9 out of 5, only because I thought the treasure in this book should have a deeper impact on the plot. However, I thought the book did a great job at keeping me at the edge of my seat. As always, if you like this video, let me know what other recommendations you would like me to read, and I will see you on the next dive.